Um, and digital, and this is purposely to make, this is sort of small, illegible. Um, but we know a lot. So we maybe know your credit card if you're a subscriber. You know, we kind of know who you are. We maybe know uh, if you're in social. We definitely know your, what device you're on. But now some of the counting, for those of you using Adobe Analytics and Omniture or Google Analytics, you, know, you're, you, you don't know if I'm a unique person. I'm a unique visitor. I'm, I'm on my phone. I come over and I use my laptop. How many, how many people am I? You know, for the, you know, is anybody, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be counted as two. Um, I'm not going to be counted as one in Adobe or Google. However, Comscore or Nielsen will know that I'm just one. Um, so um, Comscore and Nielsen are, are typically used by advertising folks. It's not, they don't have a lot of actionable content for us. They can't tell us which story people were looking at yesterday. But they are your source of demographic info. They release the information every month. And we're going to get into that a little bit more. So if you want to know more about who your audience is or wh who's the biggest websites, what people are doing on social, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, they, they know that because they use essentially you know, we're familiar about this with uh, TV, sort of people meters. They know who I am, that I'm Nancy Andrews. They know what I make. They know I have 2.4 kids. They know where I live. They know, you know, and they know um, when I'm on this device that I'm the same person when I'm on this computer that when I'm on that, so that I don't get double counted. Um, we, we know where somebody is coming from. And part of the things I want to go through is just some terms. Uh, so, referring domains, uh, we know what you looked at, paths, we, we know a lot of these things. We're going to walk through some of that uh, in a little bit. Um, we know from emails, if you opened it, if you clicked on something. Uh, so, so we know a lot. So um, Comscore, and this is just a, a general Comscore um, type of thing that is just, you don't have to be a subscriber to it, you can just go and look at their blog. And you can learn, th they, they are a good uh, source of information about what's happening industry-wide. This happens to be a recent study on multi-platform use, TV versus digital alone, where they're essentially saying, based on all of our aggregation across the US, people that do two screens, look at more content. They stay longer. They, they, have, uh, uh, they, they do more in minutes. Um, you know, and this, uh, and it's combined. So this is uh, digital only. Uh, you know, how much time that multi-platform TV only, TV plus one, TV plus two. It's an interest. You, you know, that's the type of thing you can get from Comscore. I'm not going to go into it too much. You can also get from Comscore the, um, and, and probably somebody in your company has this access, so you could ask for it. So this is. In part, I want you to be able to know to ask for this. If you're interested, who your audience is, so this is FF date, and this is for September 2015, and here we see the male-female breakdown, we see the age breakdown. You can do, th and this is uh, a third party, so it's not exclusive just to FF date. Uh, you know, anybody can get this that pays for a subscription, and, um, and this is how ads are sold. It's sort of like the uh, audit bureau. Uh, type of thing. Does this, uh, so th that's the type of thing you can get from Comscore. Um, another thing is you can get just reams of data. So I don't expect you to read this, but I just want you to know it exists. But this essentially can look by market, and I can sort it any kind of way. So this, if you're in bigger companies, you can probably request this. And so I've looked at San Francisco media organization, you know, I'm in the news and information group as opposed to, you know, something that would have Amazon or social media or something else in it. And so in, for the DMA of San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, um, it shows that Yahoo, ABC News Network, then HPMG News, then CNN, then Gannett Sites, then Times Digital. Then, you know, you come down here to Hearst is number seven. Um, but those are the biggest sites in this demographic region. Uh, that's not unique. I mean, that 
it can vary for each region. In, in Pittsburgh, where I live now, the, the Post-Gazette is actually the biggest local news, is, is not news site. It's not, I haven't broken it down to only show me local. This is just news site. So um, the local news organizations, they're going to be buried in here within their parent companies. But, um, but Yahoo's number one there, and CNN is, you know, is up in there too. So. But this is the type of information. So Comscore Nielsen, not a lot of actionable things for you. Um, although this is a report they did uh, talking about where men, you know, the, the apps with the highest concentration of millennials. Has anybody ever been on Yik Yak? Yeah. Well, I, I downloaded it yesterday because I was like, I'm just skewing their thing. 98% are millennials. And, um, you know, it's just this chat thing. And uh, it's just, you know, people just, it's all the chatter near you. It, you know, the, you, you're getting BuzzFeed, Snapchat, all these, you know, um, other types of things. But if you want that type of information, this is, just, this is in the Comscore blog. So I recommend that. Here's another thing. Here's, you know, just ranking of sites. You know, Google, two, 245 million viewers uh, last month. Facebook, 217. This is all in the U.S. Um, you get down here, and I think the first media, I mean, it's truly probably all news. You have, you have weather, um, you have Twitter. You got Gannett sites here at 97 uh, million. Uh, New York Times Digital comes over here at 62. So all this is available to you, but it's a month old. You can look at devices and, uh, oh wait, this is a search engine who who's gets the biggest, you know, um, Apple for devices, but they're actually more Android users. But Android is on top with when you go with operating system. So um, that, that's sort of com score. So that, that is your best place for some of that other data. I mean, you can know it about a lot of things. I mean, how many, does this look familiar to anybody? This, this is more, uh, yeah, this is more the, your typical, um, uh, this is a Omniture or, um, you know, it could, you could do the same thing in Google, Google Analytics. Um, and, you know, the, the curve of the, the this is a, a today report from the free press. And you know what it's looking like today, what it compared to the previous day, what it looked like a week prior. Um, you know, you know, and I find that you can, I tend to have overwhelmed people with numbers in my job. So I'm going to try to get better at that. Um, and you're like, OK, you're not doing so well. You're still doing that. Um, the, uh, so try to put more graphs in. Um, and one of the things I, w I think is very important for, from the photo perspective is for us to be able to talk and identify where did the traffic come from. Because you probably you get metrics arguments used for or against you with things you want to cover, correct? The, the, how many times is, has digital analytic, you know, the numbers been named to you of why you should or shouldn't cover someone, something, you know? So they're essentially four ways that people get to our content. They, they either are a regular subscriber, they, 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 you know, they typed it in, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna actually flip over here to, uh, um, you know, they've, uh, they, you know, they've gone to the site, let me, you know, so I am a, uh, I type in freep.com, freep.com comes up, Lions are leading, that's great. Still, sort of a Detroit fan, you know, but I've got the Steelers now. Um, but that, I, and so what? So I am a typed or bookmarked visitor. I came through the front page. So I, you know, I'm probably a regular. So I'm, the, I'm your regular loyal audience. You, you still care about me. I'm on the desktop. You know, you still care about me, and we still do a lot of focus to that. But probably mobile might be bigger, especially at Sunday. Mobile definitely bigger today. Um, in Detroit, it will vary. The older the site, the more, uh, the more people you will have that are typed in bookmarked. Okay. But if I go over here, and I'm in Google, and I'll do, you know, Lions uh, uh, football today. And uh, 
let me see. I'm, I got to go to news here. I'm not, what am I getting? I'm getting all these things. Look, where is the free press? I got to give them the clicks, even though I'm not there anymore. But um, you know, I'm just going to go to the. Uh, I'll go to this one other story here. I'm going to go to the Seattle Times since we're on the West Coast here. No. So I've gone to Seattle. So this is now. It's not the front page. But it's an entry page. And this is this is this is called the entry page, and so I am a I the referring domain was Google, it was a search it was a search domain, uh, so it's a search engine, and um, you know I'm one visitor, and these are all things for me to to think about if I'm if I'm over here, and you know I've on somebody's Twitter account, and I've seen, I want to say, oh, I want to, I want to go see Dai Sugano's, uh, um, you know, his project, the great project that he did on uh, um, drugging of our kids. It's taking a while here for a second. Um, it's going to take me there. It's going to be an entry from social, but from Twitter. And it would theoretically be an entry from that, you know. Um, there we go. So, you know, and here's another one. I could have entered through there. Um, you know, I can also, uh, where's some of my BuzzFeed things here? Go back to, um, let's not go there. I'm going to take you to a BuzzFeed one. Let's go to this BuzzFeed. Okay, so, each of those sites. I, you know, I, I am entering through not the home page, through social. I'm one visitor. If I close my lap, if I go over to my phone, Amish will probably count me as, I'll, I'll be counted as another visitor. So it's two. So it's just hard to uh, figure out some of these things. Um, come back to where we are here. Oh, I lost my place. Um, Sorry about this. I had to switch back and forth for you. Let's go right here. So if somebody talks to you about what your traffic is from, you might ask them, you know, what was the source? What was it? You know, something played poorly that you thought would do well. You might ask where it was played and how it was handled on social. You know, because social is really important. Um, the uh, in Omniture or in uh, Adobe Analytics, you can actually track your in, you can track it. You know, your entries for your stories. This is showing the mobile visits from Facebook on this particular day, and we can actually graph it that this is what the visits look like from Facebook to mobile on this particular day and how they're doing. This is what they look like from Twitter. This is what they look like from other websites. So we can do some of that same graphing, but all of that information is there. We even parse this down to the reporter level so that I have, in, in, in Omniture you can say, who is the author? What's their referring domain? All of this, and you can get this so that uh, a reporter can look at this by byline and see that they, they'll have maybe have just gaps that they can see what they've done in other years, and it really helps them. I mean, other days, and they can go by what um, what their uh, you know they, they can say, "Gosh, I need to tweet. I'm not getting any. I'm not getting any entries." Um, you know, we we talk a lot about quality of experience now. But your web person is still going to come back to you concerned, uh, <laughs> concerned about uh, page views and visitors. And the, the reason is that we're still selling our ads through impressions. How many people, how many visitors saw it? So we're, we're not yet saying, you know, this, this is paying for this right here. So as much as we might talk about quality of experience, there's 
still a lag in that. So you've got to be aware of, of both things. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what other people are seeing and um, how you get to that. And interrupt me any time. Um, this is just a, this graph showing October 21st, uh, 2014. This is our Facebook page. And it showed that our post, this is just from the Free Press Facebook page, this particular post reached 21 million people. I mean, I mean 2.1 million people, huge difference, but still a significant amount. You know, um, when you look at your Facebook page, and if there's any one thing that you take away from here is um, don't just judge how many people are seeing your work by what your page views of visitors are on your sites, and I say sites meaning your mobile device, your, your, your iPad app, your, your desktop. Judge also by the reach that it has and the selections that you're seeing. So any one piece of content is seen in a Facebook share, it's seen on your mobile device, it's seen on your website, but that picture that you pick and that headline that someone, either you're writing or somebody else is writing, and that summary paragraph is seen by a lot of people. And that will um, you know, make a decision whether somebody's going to click on your content. Somebody who said, like, you know, how do I get more people to look at that? It, that writing, and the eye tracking thing, she was talking about how the caption is seen. Think about yourself. Think about the human-centered design. Think about you know, if you could just even watch somebody search for something. And what makes them click? What makes you click when you search for something? Um, so that paragraph, in some content management systems, it's the first paragraph of a story. Most content management systems make that the default, but you have the ability to, the, the more sophisticated the system, you might have the ability to write that paragraph five different ways for going five different places. So know what that is for your, with your place. Um, but that paragraph is just going to go over, over, and over. So this is Whitney Richardson. Um, she works at the producer for the New York Times and the Lynn's blog. Um, and she tells me, you know, that more than 50% of their traffic comes from social. So uh, that is important. Um, I talked to Kate. Hang on, I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. Um, Kate. Uh, I had noticed that she was the editor on uh, a couple of things that, um, that were more serious, and they were actually San Francisco-based photographers, Peter Kaihart and um, Patrick Witte. Um, one had, um, and, and, I, and I wanted to talk to her to see how they did. This is Patrick's, and he had these Instagram pictures of, um, of refugees, so this was his share. And these did not as well as kittens on BuzzFeed, okay. Um, but uh, you know, I think it's important to know that these disrupting organizations like a BuzzFeed, they're becoming more like us. They're, they're doing harder news and such. I don't know if you've seen that trend in, in, in your own place. The, the disruptor then starts to replicate the, uh, the, the, existing, the existing media. This was Peter's story. And this was on Syrian refugees as well. And this one did much better than the other Syrian refugees. And Kate thought it was simply because of this photograph. Because this photograph was the share for Facebook, you know, was the share for Pinterest. And people were, you know, engaged in her and you know, in her eyes, and it was more inviting. So it kind of even though I don't know if, uh, you know, in the eye tracking study, this would be called a mugshot. To me, it wasn't a mugshot because her eyes are so um, inviting, you know, in the pink there. But it, it brought people in. Uh, Rob Gates in Louisville says, hey, we looked at, we looked at, it's not rocket science in a sense. We just looked at last year's content on Louisville's, uh, you know, on the Kentucky Derby. And we saw which subject matters did well. I mean, subject, you know, the, the content. So we switched our video and just did videos on that content. And so our video looked like this as compared to last year. Uh, by just going, well, what, what were the topics that people were interested in? I mean, and it's not, 
I mean, that makes sense, right? If I do a video, even if it's a cool video, but if it's of the, an angle that no one cares about, you know, doesn't matter, you know, people aren't going to click. Um, Kelly Brown uh, runs um, the digital operation in Des Moines. And they kind of looked at rag, I, I don't know if you're familiar with rag, it's this giant race, I mean, but bike adventure thing across Iowa. Like tens of thousands of people ride across Iowa for days. And you know, they were doing these like day six photos of rag bri. I mean, does that really make you want to click? And, and, and they still did this, but they found that if they just did themes, you know, like great sunsets, stunning sunrises. And I did ask her, I was like, did you not include sunsets? Did you only do sunrises? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, yeah, we were done by sunset. <laughs> we, were, we were so tired. <laughs> we only got sunrises. But this was really popular, oh, um, the, the, the theming of it. Uh, and they didn't have really too much data to prove on, on that in a certain way, but they just could sort of look and it's like, oh, this is, you know, we could, we could do that better. Um, they also did, um, there's a lot of things we still don't know. Um, this is, uh, they did 360 videos of politicians at, you know, these stump speeches. You know, you could, uh, and they had some live, they had as many as 10,000 people watching th their live video, and their, their 360 video. Um, but they actually don't have a lot of data. So the newer thing that you do, the less data you will have. They don't really know how many people looked at all of these uh, videos, like did they click on Chris Christie and see his or, or, or whatever. They don't, they don't have that, they don't have that data. Um, but they felt like it increased engagement. Uh, Matt Krieger, a photographer at Indianapolis Star, he has learned, and, and, we, and we probably sort of know this, is that if you post stuff immediately while it is happening, that you get more views. So we tend to want to craft something, a longer video, but that, you know, and he, he will, even if he doesn't do it, you know, he's, what I've learned from him is, even, you know, if the event's happening and you want to do it, you know, just post the picture from, just take a picture of the back of your camera and post it. And, and he, uh, you know, he's perplexed by this, but he does it because he's like, I think all this, and he has about 3,000 followers. And when he photographs, he photographed fireworks one time, and he got like 300 retweets from posting a decent fireworks picture immediately. Whereas he thought, but I did a, such a better fireworks picture like an hour and a half later. You know, and it's that way with news, it's that way with everything that you know, people want to know it now. Interrupt me for questions at any time um, you know, as we get into things. I'm just sort of yammering on here. Uh, so uh, this is one of the last things I did at the free press where we, we've got this boat that people love, the Bobolo boat. So the Bobolo boat were these steamships, or I guess they were originally steam. Um, they were in the turn of the century. They all stopped running by the 80s and 90s. And like, you know, a, you know, a, thousands of buildings in Detroit. This Bobla boat is in decay, but a uh, nonprofit in New York has purchased it to renovate it and put it on the Hudson. So we did a 3D virtual tour of it. So using Chartbeat, and I don't know what, if y'all are, um, you know, we've got a couple people in here who use Chartbeat. So the thing I don't like about Chartbeat is I feel like it takes the web producers and it focuses them too much on desktop because they're looking at this cool little chart that's showing, the, you know, the green means they're going faster and getting more and the red is a receding one, you want to do this. And you see the, how people are clicking on this page. Uh, you don't really get to see that for the mobile. I don't think they've perfected that yet. They now have A and B testing for headlines and they now have A and B uh, testing for photos. And they, they will, you don't have to have the content management system that does that. So if you are a Chartbeat subscriber, that is another thing that you can, you can get. So we did this because it took a huge amount of time. I probably spent 80 hours on this. 
um, documenting these, these decks. But we knew that because there's an emotional attachment to this boat in the city, it was like a rite of passage that you would get on this boat every summer with your family and go to this amusement park in, the, in Lake Erie, um, that people would, people would click on it because that, that's the first thing. But then the problem is we can't really tell you a lot more um, than that. You know, I mean, that this is, this is from the company with the, you know, the engagement. They don't even give you this normally. I'm like, hey, can we, you know, so I know about 50,000 people looked at the 3D models and spent, but they can't tell me how long they spent. It's not showing up as time on our page but it's an engagement. I know that people tweeted it and thought it was cool, but I just don't know. And as the creator of the model, I don't know, like, did people go upstairs? Did they do this? Did they turn left or right? What should I have done? I don't have any of that tracking. One day I will, you know, or we will. Um, we do know from Chartbeat, we can, a lot of times people are like, just how far down did they read your story? So. If you have chart B, you have the ability, how many people have used the heads up display? Familiar with that, okay. Yeah, so you can scroll down in a story and what they do is they, they have a pa the page and they divide it up into 10, uh, 10 sections. So if your story is this long, it's divided up into 10 or if it's this long, it's divided into 10. Uh, and they, it, they are using not over time but of the people on the page right now. So in this case, there's 152 people on this page, and most re visitors didn't read past here. Now, I like to think of it in a more positive light and go, most visitors read until here. <laughs> 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 but, but that's important to know that, hey, only this many, because so there's a, the, the model is up top, and I'll, um, let me, uh, I'll have to, later I'll go and show you that. But then you have these models along here. So 40% got to this model, 28% got to this. It was, the boat was too big and we had to break it up into different models. We couldn't uh, do it. And I'll show you all this in, in a little bit. But that engagement, I don't know a lot about that. Just like Des Moines doesn't know a lot about their 360 video. Um, and when we've done, we did 360s in Detroit and we did things to see, we, we, we couldn't know how they acted once they were in the interactive. It's almost like flash. Um, how many of you use Brightcove for, for your video hosting? Okay, because I'm going to show you Brightcove, but it's probably available in other things. So we do know this story information now for desktop. We don't know it for mobile, and it's important you make that distinction. Um, we also know it for video. So this is a, about a shipwreck in the Great Lakes. Um, this is a great video. It's, we've shown it in, in a theater setting where there's a 45 minute feature. This is not 45 minutes, I'm not gonna make you do that. But this is the thumbnail and I wanna talk about expectations. So the thumbnail is a scuba diver, okay? So here's the engagement of that video, um, you know, about, a little bit more than 15,000 people started the video in this time frame. By 25%, we've dropped to 8,000. Um, and so, but I'm wondering, sometimes you know you can learn about the content as editor. So if you have this, please, please take a look. So I clicked on a scuba diving and I get a painter, okay? And I get a painter for a watch. And he's telling me this history, history of the boat. I mean, it's beautiful. But I clicked on a, you know, I think I clicked on a, a, a scuba diver. So now I'm slowly, I'm a minute and a half in, and I'm just sort of getting on the road. But I'm not on the road, I'm not on a boat. Okay, I'm in a boat, okay. I maybe I'm gonna get to the water. All right, I'm not in the water yet. I'm now at two minutes and a half. I'm not in the water yet, but I'm leveling up because, okay, I've stayed here. I'm willing to get in the water. I'm in the water. I mean, it's practically flat now. And it's with good reason. I'm coming along, I'm in the water, I'm in the water. And along in here, you get out of the water because it's really average. There are only four points in this graph, so I don't know exactly when they leave. But I'm out, I'm out of the water. Now I'm watching the video of them in the water, in the boat. And so I'm like, I'm, I'm bailing. And 
oh my God, I'm back to the painter. And I'm really bailing now, right? But yet it's a beautiful story. Yet the, um, but the completion rate of this was, was sort of low. And in part, I think it was the expectation of the setup. Um, would we had fewer people to have entered the first time was not as cool of a uh, um, thumbnail. Or when we tell this story in a digital environment, we need to tell it differently. This, yes? to read is, but I would be in tears to have more than a 50% drop off at 25% if I put a lot of time on it. I mean, not tears, but I think that we, I think we can do better than this. You know, yeah. Yeah, so this one's the lower. Yeah. Right. And I'm saying as editors that this, what I'm trying to tell you is that this information is there. And so many people were rushing around so fast, we don't go use it. And it's there for stories and it's there for photos and video. Yeah. Well, I think that this is it's conversation with the the you know and it, it's that the that the video people making video gain the knowledge of how this happened and it's you know was it con I could even interview you know with the human centered design things that we've been talking about and not having to have this broad sample I know that more than fifteen thousand people acted this way I could just have somebody in the office watch it and 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 and, and and see when they get bored. You can tell when they get bored. They start looking other places. You can do these other things. And you could quiz them about it. I think some of it is a recognition of it took me too long to get to the thing that I was advertised. You know? And that's what people think of as clickbait. It's not that it's kitten you know, that it, or, or you know, scantily clad people. It's that you didn't give me what I thought I was going to get. So I think that's the larger problem with this. And all we have to do is just move it up. And I think that the different situations deserve, deserve, deserve different video editing. In a theater setting, this was fine. I'm already trapped in my seat. You know, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think this advice of having somebody who's not a photographer and not a video editor mm -hmm. take a look at a video is, is really important because it really speaks to the color. For guys, we had a group of people who, it took 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we had a group of maybe six or eight or 10 people who watched it five, maybe six times. Mm -hmm. But I think, though, I can't remember who made this, this, this point, that you know, we also have this drop-off rate in stories. And drop-off rate, I'm also going to say, is not a bad thing. And I'm going to show you in a second. Let me show you a couple more videos. You know, this is um, a video of uh, a, you know, a, a car crash thing. And it's just, you're just riding along. And people are, are it's just raw video. And they're <coughs> bailing at certain points where they're deciding, OK, I, I don't want to watch it anymore. It's, not, it's just simply raw. Um, this has actually an upward kick that I think some people are scrolling. Like somebody has said, hey, go, go scroll to this. It's, 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 the, uh, it's a raw video. It's pretty short. It's only like 30 seconds long. And it, um, it's of a dog being rescued by the Coast Guard. Now, um, so there are curves like that. Um, this is from that same pileup. 
Um, and I should actually check to see if the audio would work on these because it wasn't, for some reason, I have video of this, so we, I could actually make you watch all, all three minutes of this. Um, but uh, the audio wasn't working. This, the audio is actually really good. It's, um, the truck was carrying um, firecrackers and, and like uh, fireworks stuff, so it's always making this noise. Um, so it has better, uh, better completion rate, although it's not as long. It's just 30 seconds. Um, but, look, I mean, it's 156,000 people looked at that. Um, but uh, here's an example of, of looking at a story. Um, and I think that if you don't have a, something like a chart beat, you can also do this by simply looking at the time on the page. There are a couple of things that you can show. You've got visitors or visits to a page, and, and you've got... Um, than how, what they did once they're there. We're going to go over that in a second. But this I can tell from the scroll. 78 visitors read until here. So it's actually very positive. <laughs> the, uh, you know, it's about this um, opposition to this mosque. Okay. Visitors didn't read past here. But it's interesting to then look, when you look at these, to see, well, why? Why are people why are people bailing a lot there? What is it? And and sometimes you know then you know it drops to forty one, and then you look and it's like oh, look at this paragraph. It started background, so all the new stuff was up top. When people got to background is when, you know, that was the pivot point where well you know only half the people wanted to read the background, and well forty percent of the people wanted to read the background. So that's actually not a bad thing. Maybe these are your regular audience, and they know all the background of this. <laughs> That's true too. You you will you will you will sometimes find that oh the writing gets really clunky here. You, know, you can do just like you the you know the editing there. There was one video, and I couldn't remember what it was, but it was just like an interview in a locker room, and it was you know that normally has high engagement. It, it's exclusive. You know, it's, you know, you feel like you have the exclusive access of the reporter. You're in there. You're talking to Brad Osmus or you're talking to, you know, Justin Verlander with the, you know, Tigers. You're, you're right there. But there was this time where, like, there was this jumble and, like, the, the camera went, started getting pointed at the floor and, and nobody's talking. And it was just, it was maybe five seconds that it was jumbled before it was back up again. And people just bailed in that five seconds. You know, that would have been, that would have been much better to have cut it, got rid of that five seconds of weirdness. Um, but, you know, but some people still kept going on. They like those numbers, 18%, you know. Um, and let me see, yeah, that's, uh, I was going to go into Facebook's insights there. But, so you can, I want to look at the story. A lot of times, I, you know, we really hear, but, oh, but you're, the video, don't, nobody watched the whole thing. Well, you know what? Nobody read the whole story either. Um, or maybe not nobody, but, you know, sometimes it's 8%. You know. Same point, too, when you're up on something, let me go back to here, um, you know, when, you, when you've got a, um, you know, a page like this, and you know that you, you, you can rank this by engagement time, by how long people are looking at these stories once they're there. And some of you are like, oh, that one's horrible. It's only 25 seconds, or this one's horrible. Well, you, sometimes you click on it, and you see it's a brief. And so it's OK that, you know, to, to, have it, to have it be that. Um, you know, so uh, let me see. How are we doing on time? When, when am I supposed to end? Is it noon or noon? Or? Oh, OK. Uh, well, I'm trapping people with numbers here. Um, I want to. Um, I want to show you a little bit more of this chart. So, um, you know, looking, I think it's important to look over time. But let's just look at, raise this up a little bit. Actually, it might be better with desktop because it's easier names. Um, so, this is simply a list of that particular day, and the, the content was sorted by page views, because we often think about page views. And these are, you know, photo gallery, 
story, a story, you know, it, I can, our system got really clunky where we no longer had the headline, so you had to read the URLs. Um, but um, I think it's important to have these, to understand some of these different metrics for a particular story. So page views we get a lot. You know, we all, kind of all understand what a page view is, right? You know, you, you click on a page, it's a page view. You go onto another page, it's another page view. Um, but the entry is important. So with this story, the, that, or this, this picture gallery on soccer, it's got 29,000 views. It's got 11 entries. That's not really bringing new people. But look at this story right below it. It's got 11,000 page views. It's got 8,200 entries, okay? So it's not necessarily just as, you know, the page views, that tell, you know, the difference between those, so you have to do math. So the difference between these, so, you know, what is that, 3,000 uh, page views difference, essentially. That's how many of my regular audience probably looked at it, but 8,200 people came in through either social or another website or search. Um, it had about 10,000 visits. They spent 2.48, and so these are percentages. That's not 48 seconds. It's 48% of a, of a minute. Um, and the bounce rate was uh, almost 80%. And you'll see bounce rate for the photo gallery was zero because people clicked on something else. So bounce is exactly kind of what it sounds like. You know, if I take a ball and I throw it up against the wall, it bounces back. So I go to a page and I've got a really high bounce rate, that means I didn't do anything else on that page. I didn't click on anything else. There wasn't a photo gallery for me to look at. There wasn't a little chart. There wasn't a poll. There wasn't, you know, there wasn't um, a video. I just bounced right off. I just ricocheted right off. Now, so, some, so what you can look at as a, as a web producer or editor, you can go, okay, We've got this story, it's getting a lot of entries, and it's got a hot, pretty high bounce rate. Although this is not that bad um, for a story. I need to put more things on it. You know, is there a photo gallery I can put on that? What, you know, I've got a lot of people coming in to that story. What, um, what can I put on that page? And that's sort of where a picture editor can come in uh, and, you know, and say, hey, I see that this, is, this page is getting a lot of entries. What can we do to make it better? Because that, that page on some days, can be bigger than your home page. It's a lot of, if you've got a big story that's a big new news that's happened in your area, more people may come in through that. So you really have to concentrate on that article page. And this is true now in mobile too. Um, it's just there in names. It's, it, 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 it's just like reading uh, hieroglyphics for me a little bit on that. But um, so I also compare bounce rate and time spent because bounce rate you know, I want that to be a lower number, so I want people to click on other things. But I'm not a total failure if they spent some time on the page, and they, they almost spent three minutes on this one article, the average time spent. So you can look at that with galleries, too, because some people might say, oh, well, galleries, that's just eye candy, that's just fluff, you know, people are just clicking through. Well, look, my average time spent on the gallery was three minutes, was more than, almost four minutes. So people were, engaged in that. Um, what was it? It was, it was about soccer. So um, there is a, that you want to take these two numbers into account, time and bounce. Um, let, me, let me also go down. Um, you would also, let's see, you know, because that the, you know, we can, um, we can note for videos, some people, I think they're, you know, people uh, compare videos versus photo galleries sometimes, but you, again, you're going to have to do math to do the time spent, the average time spent, because, of, although they may have that now. Um, I've got it on page views, because page views and visitors are somewhat the same in video, whereas they're, um, they're not if they're not with photo galleries. You might have one visitor look at 10 pictures. Multiply that times, you know, 100. So you get 100 visitors. They looked at a thousand pictures. You know. um, 
So this is the overwhelming amount of data. Um, you can't get all the same data for everything. Um, but let's look at, and you know, and it all has a, a, a curve. And sometimes the curve is very much like your regular curve of your site. I mean, any questions on this of with, with uh, uh, the data that you can find from uh, 